My name is Malik Farad. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I got into music back when I was uh, 16. Um, I'm 24 now. What really got me involved was when I was younger. I um I used to have like I used to have a lot of like issues with depression. And the one thing that helped me escape my depression and and the things that I was going through, even though I was young, it was like depression based off of you know small things like family issues, um, relationships, friendships. And to battle with that, I would always write. I would always write poetry. I would always uh, jot down my thoughts and and do the best thing that I could to express how I was feeling at that time. And through that, I started to um, write like little funny raps. Like I played sports, so I would write about basketball and like football and things like that. And then when I um, I forget which video it was. I think it was like a. It's funny, I think it was like a Bow Wow video or something, and I was like, man, I could do that. I know I can do that. And I was young, and I just saw it, and I was like, man, I know I can be a rapper one day. Um, I, Ironic enough, like, really, my parents weren't really there for me growing up. I grew up in my household with my grandmother. Um, my father was in and out of my life, um, just doing crazy stuff, being young, and he was always in and out of trouble. And then my mom, she, she battle with like drug issues um so to to keep me safe they sent me to my grandmother's house when I was about five or six and through that um I lived with her and she raised me so the music in the household it was funny because she's from an older generation so she would play like the Temptations and like um James Brown Michael Jackson and you know the classics um Anita Baker and stuff like that so when I would hear those type that type of music I was like wow like this is like soul and I really got into soul um I guess mentally before I actually got into rap but every time she would like drive me in the car she would play radio music like mainstream mainstream pop or whatever it was on the radio at that time and I think during that time it was like when boy bands were hot pause um <laughs> I think um, it was like In Sync and Backstreet Boys, all that stuff that was on the radio. So I was hearing all different types of music, from hip hop to pop to um, soul. Like when I was growing up, my first rap, my first rap I remember. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I know it's about basketball. It was back when um, Kevin Garnett was on the uh, Timberwolves. It was like when Iverson uh, crossed up Jordan. All my sports fans that know that moment. Um, it was back. It was back in that time period, and I was just rapping about like how my how my bars were like f like how I could flow like Iverson and I'll cross you up because I was really into like punchlines. I was really into like disses and stuff like that. Because coming up, I used to listen to a lot of um, Smack DVDs and like different battles and stuff like Reed Dollars and all those guys. So I would write little battles. Just in case if someone wanted to test me or challenge me, I would be like, all right, I'm ready. So I would, um, that's what I really started to do. So yeah, my first rap was like about basketball and how I'll cross you up and whatever, whatever with my flow. And it was something like real funny. The first, really the one of the first people that got me involved, shout out to Trey Razor. Um, he was one of the first people that I met growing up who I saw that was really doing it. He was like, he, he presented an idea to me when I was like 16. And he was like, it was funny how we met. I had like ordered pizza from this sub shop and he came over and I had an early version of, uh, I had an early version of um, Fruity Loops. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was on the computer with it. And when he came over and delivered the food to my house, he kind of peeped, I guess, through um, the, the door that I had and he saw that I had a uh, early version of Fruity Loops and he was like man you make music and I was like yeah I gotta make music and you know I was just telling him like yeah he was like well I really I really make music and let's, let's link up like I work at the sub shop up the street so like if you ever want to talk let's do it so the following day I met up with him got to meet him as a person we started to build our friendship and then he first played to me uh, um it was like a CD that he was working on. He had a bunch of artists on it. And that was like my first time um, really being with someone 
who was playing me their music on a CD. And it tripped me out because he was like, yeah, man, like, I can get you in a studio. I can do this for you. And, like, you can be on a CD one day. And I was like, exact, like, this is what I'm trying to do. So after that, we just built a solid relationship. And, like, through that, we just recorded a lot of music. I was in a little group um, coming up called TRP, uh, Trade Razor Productions, and one of my first big records was this song called Baltimore. Um, you can look it up on the internet. It's really funny because I look mad young. My dreads are real tiny, but it's it's a classic for a lot of people in Baltimore City know about it. Um, a lot of people till this day still like hit me up and they'll be like, yo, that song like changed my life or or meant something to me. And it's crazy that I created something when I was like 16 that really resonated on people. It really resonated on people. And then through that moment, I realized like, I can do this. I'm only 16. I made such a big record with Trait Razor, with TRP and Bossman at the time, who was just like skyrocketing in our, in our city. And when we did that, it just had such an impact. So that was like one of the first real joints that I did. And one of the first real joints that kind of got me established when I used to go by money. That was like my early name. Yeah. Well, the first thing with TRP is um, we're all still cool. Everyone's still cool. But um, through TRP, certain things started to happen. Like one of the members, um, shout out to Young V, Free Young V. He's been locked up for a long time now. He's been locked up for a couple years. And um, my other, me and Trey Razor, we actually still talk every day. I just talked to him the other day. Um, we still work on music here and there. But he's, he's doing his own thing. I'm doing my own thing. But we still show each other a ton of love. Um, Miss Dees, who was also in the group, this female rapper, she's still making music. So everyone's still good, but we all kind of went our separate ways. Because I think at the time, as we all started to grow up and develop, we realized that it would be important for us to individually establish our own followings and fan bases. And then down the line, maybe relink back up when everything comes together. So that's kind of where that went. But the name change, I used to go by money because money was something I never had. Like, I always... Growing up, money in my household was something that my family um, never really had. My grandmother never really had. So I was like, man, I'm going to go buy something that I want, money. And when I did that, excuse me, when I did that, I was like, yeah, every time I say my name and every time I mention it to someone, I'm doing it for a purpose. But as I got older, probably like when I was around like 18-ish, 17-ish, I started to realize that money was such a uh, name that was holding me back a little bit because... People wouldn't take me serious in interviews. People wouldn't take me serious in meetings. They'd be like, oh, this guy goes by money. What does he know? What, you know what I mean? And and also, for um, internet purposes, when the internet started to really come up, um, it was hard to find me on it. You type in money, you're not going to find me. You're going to get American currency or whatever else you get. So I was like, man, I got to change my name. And then the name, um, the name Malik Farad, a lot of people want to know this because I don't really say it too much. But the name Malik Farad uh, comes from, well, Farad is my real middle name. So right off jump, that's like something that that means something to me because it's my middle name. But funny enough, I used to hate my middle name growing up. I'd be like, what is a Farad? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, excuse me. But what, what the fuck is a Farad? Like, but as I got older and when I was thinking for my next name change, I was like, why not use that? Because it's unique. And then Malik means king. Um, in Arabic, so I put it together, so it's like King Farad. That's really what it means. Yeah, yep. It's my. It's it's definitely my. Um, it's my first album. Um, I released it on May fifteenth. Um, and it means a lot to me, man. I've been working on it since the last mixtape, since uh the damn mixtape. That's what it was called. Another reason I call the last mixtape damn is because I wanted that to be people's reaction. I wanted people to hear this tape and be like, damn. And like, that's all I wanted from it. So I was like, word, let's call it that. And But going back to Infinity, um, I put a lot of time into it. I put like two and a half years into the creation process, writing music, um, developing relationships, friendships. And I went through a lot in those past two and a half years that really shaped how this album sounds. And um, the name Infinity came to mind because I wanted, infinity means forever, to last forever, ongoing forever, and that's what I wanted my album to be, I wanted someone to be able to play it in 10 years, 100 years, you know what I mean, as far as, as long as possible, and yeah, we released it on May 15th, and since then, it's been a blessing, it's been a real blessing. Man, I, like, the track listing has changed so much, I mean, when you're working on a project for like two and a half years, 
I've probably had like 10 different track listings. The very first track listing is, um, I'm trying to think. The very first track li listing actually had the song that is first on the album now. It's called Ask For. And it's funny because leading up until about a week um, to the track listing when I was creating it, that song came back to me and I was like, yo, I got to put this first because it still resonates as a first sounding type of song. And my roommate produced the track. Shout out to Shark. He produced the track. And um, yeah, man, that, I, I think that was the first track that I wrote and still it managed to be the first track on the uh, album. If you go to Baltimore, then I'll see you in heaven.